Okay, I'm gonna let you know this is a goofy video right now on hummingbirds. I'm sitting here in my kitchen trying to figure out lighting. And I thought, you know, I'm talking about things and maybe some of you are interested in this. Look at this, I'm still trying to figure out lighting. That's perfect, but that's kind of awkward. And the hummingbirds don't like me swinging around a light. These are hummingbird feeders that are literally out my kitchen window. See, this is my kitchen window. And what I've done here is, what have I done here? I took the screen out and I rolled up a separate screen. I just put a screen there. You probably can't see it, but it's up there. And I can roll the screen. See what I can do? I can roll it up and there's some hooks there. If you want to see me here, there's some hooks there so I can roll it up. There's a little a pole inside the screen. I kind of stapled it up and slid in a pole and I can roll the screen up and put the screen up when I want. I cannot leave the screen down because they will come in the house. And I've netted this whole room, which I think you've seen on other videos. So I've got like, it's not netting, it's tool, the same tool I use in my garden. So if they did come in here, I'm gonna call this like a breakfast area. They can't go anywhere. I'm tired of holding this. So that's what I've done in here. And what I'm trying to do is share the hummingbirds with you and have fun at the same time doing videos. But I'm dark or they're light. I want to say the camera's not cooperating with me, but I'm probably not cooperating with the camera because there's only so much you can do. And of course you could buy expensive equipment, bring in lighting, beat it on my face, and I don't need to be in it anyways. But here I have the feeders and let's see, what can I tell you about hummingbirds that you may or may not know? You've probably seen the video how I explained that we did start with one. I only saw one flying around and I used to put a feeder out here and there and he'd come and that would be it. We didn't have a lot of hummingbirds. We didn't have a lot of goldfinches either. And now we've got literally hundreds and hundreds all over the place. Gary loves them. He was so excited to see them. Gee, I think that was over 10 years ago. It's like, oh, look, a goldfinch. Now it's like, oh, look, they're all over. They're eating your lettuce. They're eating this. They eat the lettuce seeds. They eat the grains too, the goldfinches. But with the hummingbirds, it started with just really, it just started with one and then two. And, you know, a lot of times you think you have one, but there's a calculation. I've got it on my other video. You can actually calculate how many hummingbirds you're feeding because there has been a full calculation on that. And that's how I found out at some point I'm feeding close to 3,000 hummingbirds. More so in the winter. Right now we're in the fall. And they're still finding a lot of flowers, they're traveling, they're migrating, so they're coming through. Now we've got, let's say, normal residents that live here all year, all year. And most of those are anis. And then of course we have some other species. We have a, we've got five species that live here all through the year. Not all year, but all through the year. And then a lot of your Rufus and Ellens, they kind of disappear for a short time. They nest somewhere else and then they come back, which is good because the Rufus and the Ellens look alike. Okay, now the lighting's getting really weird. The Rufus and the Allens, see I'm holding, it's a light my daughter bought me, but I've ordered an 18 inch, so that's coming. I'll see if that works any better. Uh, they look alike and even when they're studying them out in the fields, a lot of times they have to capture them, they ban them, and they have to really look for the little details to know on the males which are which, and the females too. They just look alike. But I'll tell you the easiest way to know the Rufus, the Allens are very polite. They seem to come in, they eat, and they don't bother with anybody. But the Rufus, the little rusty ones, the Allens are rusty too, I, I'm gonna use that term rusty. They are bullies. They come in, they try to chase everybody away and well, that's what, and they're tiny too. They're not the smallest, but they are the smallest ones that we get here. So that's how you know it's a Rufus. It's their personality. See, I don't know what you can see here. See, every time I move, they're going to move. Let's see, what else can I tell you that you may be interested in? Feeding, I prefer cane sugar. Is cane sugar GMO'd over the a beet sugar? Yes, they're both GMO now. They started GMOing cane sugar years ago, so you won't know. Um, it's generally not labeled. If it says not GMO, then it won't be. If it doesn't say, then you don't know. But I prefer cane sugar over beet sugar. Sugar beet. Sugar beet is a, it's a vegetable that they, well, they GMO'd it and they figured out a process to get all the sugar out. And it looks the same. And then you've got cane sugar. Of course, you all know what cane sugar is. It grows like, like bamboo and then they process that. 
Both of them are sucrose. So once it is done, it doesn't matter. Isn't this ridiculous that I'm holding a light? Once it, once it is done, it doesn't matter. The sucrose is what these birds need. I know a lot of you come in and go, no, no, don't give them sugar, it's processed. Believe it or not, that is what they need. They need sucrose. And if they don't get enough, well, you just won't have the numbers because they do have two, three, and four nests a year. And why do you think they have a lot of nests? Because generally, a lot of them do not live. That's just the facts of life. They produce a lot of babies, anywhere from, from, let's say, four to eight babies. And that's because mortality can be quite high on them. They are delicate. They don't like the heat. They don't do as well uh, with the heat that they do with the cold. The cold, they can figure out how to put their body in a state where they can just sit and basically go into a 12-hour hibernation. But with the heat, if they can't get out of the heat, then they can perish. So if you don't give them food, don't you dare come in. If you don't give them food and they can't find enough, then probably a lot of the hummingbirds in your area just won't survive or they'll leave. They'll migrate and go somewhere else. So there is nothing wrong with giving them white granulated sugar. I did a taste test, I did the video, and you know what, it didn't matter. Either sugar to them was fine. Keep in mind, like I've talked about before, flowers are different. All flowers taste different. They go to tobacco flowers, they go to moringa flowers, they go to all the different flowers, hibiscus and different flowers around the yard, all your citrus trees, and they're all gonna taste different. They're looking for the pollen and the nectar. So taste to them will be like us, a personal preference. So if you put out cane sugar and put out beet sugar, and I do not mix it, so I either make all cane or all beet, then you can see which ones in your area like the most. Maybe your neighbor's putting out cane and you're putting out beet sugar and they like cane sugar and they'll go over to your neighbor's house. That's, you know, that, that could be it too. Let's see, what else would you want to know? But I've tried both and I actually have both right now out the window. I've got some feeders that have strictly, I make uh, gal a gallon of each and then I'll spread it around. So they have a choice. When it comes to cane sugar, cane sugar is very sweet to taste. Very, very sweet. You, you can actually taste test it and you'll be able to taste the difference. Where sugar beet has kind of a burnt caramely taste. Otherwise, as far as let's call it nutrition for them, and I know a lot of you are gonna go, no. But let's say nutrition, both of them are equally the same. Even the Hummingbird Society says either one will do. They go back like me and say they prefer cane, but either one will do. Let's see, they will test anything, these guys over my shoulder, they will test anything I put out. And that's how wonderful they are. See, look at that, they're all over back there. And this is not just all the feeders I've got. I've got them in the yard, I've got them on the other kitchen window, I've got them on my deck. I put hummingbird feeders everywhere. But if I make a hummingbird feeder and I put it out there and it can be really something odd looking, they'll test it. I could do a commercial. I could do a commercial on anything. If I put a jar of peanut butter out there and put a hummi little hummingbird feeder on top, they would test it. I needed a clip one. So I wanted to do it for fun. I had brought up Cabbage Patch dolls. So I thought, gee, it'd be really cute because I said the word Cabbage Patch doll to drop in something since it was on hummingbirds and show the a Cabbage Patch doll since I've got a few here that belonged to my daughter when she was little. And I put it out there with a little makeshift feeder. See the little dots that I've made there? I make the dots. I put it in her lap and I had that photo, that video clip, in probably less than five seconds. It was that quick. They were sitting out in the trees here and they watched me put it out and it's like, oh, she put something out. And they all came and I had that clip in a matter of seconds. I can take a wine glass and drop in a little feeder in there. They will come right away and drink out of that. I can put a feeder on my hat. They'll come. Feed. They will come and follow me around the yard even when I don't want them to and they think I've got a feeder. Are they desperate for food? Obviously not. You can see right now they've got plenty of food, but they're very curious. And once you get them in your yard and they're comfortable and they know you, they will check out anything you do. I've had people come and write to me and say, um, you're right, I started feeding them and we had a party. Of course, this was before the lockdown. And we had like 50 people here and they found me. And they were following me around and looking at, to see what I've got. They knew who I was, they do know. They absolutely know the person feeding them. They get very familiar. So if you've got kids, have the kids put out feeders so they get to know all of you. They know who are putting these feeders out. This is what I would call, let's see if I can move you in. 
I would, why am I holding this? Let's put this down right now. I would call this, I hung it up with the, well, there's kind of hooks in there. This is a feeding station. It is not a single feeder in a garden. When you put a single feeder in the garden, it becomes, quote unquote, <laughs> a flower. Now you get the rufus and some of the birds, especially the rufus, trying to protect it because it's their plant, it's their flower. But this is a feeding station. See, I even have a tray there and they can feed out of that one as well. Yeah, I don't know, he was going to, I just scared him. That better not be a bee that flew in. Uh, the point is, this is a feeding station, so they're not dumb. They know that this is not a flower. There's no plant sitting here except for out the window in the garden. So they consider this a feeding station and they all take their turns. They're fantastic here. They'll come in, they'll wait, they'll hang out. I've got some Christmas lights here now they hang out on and they'll just hang out and wait until there's a seat for them. Right now with me sitting here, you can see I'm kind of spooking them a little bit. Let me sit forward a little bit. But you could have every single seat on these feeders full. And I do have more feeders on the other window. And they'll wait. They're not going to chase anybody off. Oh, you might have a couple of the youngsters kind of pushing each other around. But normally they'll wait. And as soon as somebody gets up and leaves, you know, like musical chairs, they'll just take a, take a seat. So they're all really friendly. But again, this is a feeding station. So if you've got like, let's say, a place to set that up and they learn that this is a feeding station, I can stick you out the window for a minute to see, then what you're going to do is train them and let them know that this, is, this has got plenty of food for them. And that's it. But again, please, when it comes to sugar, they need the sucrose. If they don't get enough sucrose by the end of the day, they have to eat their body weight many times sometimes over if they don't get enough food then they perish that's just the facts of life unlike some birds that can get sick and they can just hang out somewhere like let's say a parrot or a larger bird they can just kind of just be left alone and then in a day or two feel better as long as they get some water with hummingbirds if they don't get that sucrose in their body and that's why sucrose is so important they will perish and they will die. They have to have it every single day. So if they're traveling and migrating and they don't find enough food, a lot of them will perish. I think what happens here, coming out here, because they know the migration pattern that they take and they've taken it before and their youngsters come with them, even though they don't travel in flocks. They may travel, it'll look like together, but they're really not. You're not gonna see a flock of hummingbirds go by. They're all going in the same direction is what it is, but they're not, they're not, they're, they're not a uh, flock bird, but they are very aware of each other and what they're doing. They listen for other hummingbirds feeding and they, they have keen eyesight as well as keen hearing. And when they see this and they see the feeders here, then they come and they feed is what it is. So that's basically what they're doing. And then some of them will end up staying here and some of them will continue to go down south and may go to Mexico, Central America. It depends on the species as well as whatever they were brought up to do, whatever they wanna do. We do have a lot of them in the winter. What you see here is actually nowhere near as what we're gonna have in the winter. In the winter, we'll have a whole lot more. And I will be going through gallons and gallons of hummingbird food a day. And that's not just because the migrators are coming through, but you've got your residents that have multiple babies and there's not as many flowers. You can't get as many flowers in the winter. And we have a lot of weed abatement here, even in the summer and different times. It's now in Southern California, it's all year. And they don't let you just grow weeds anymore. And a lot of what you would call weeds are the food that they need. And that's the problem. And if they don't let the wild plants go into the flowering state, then they don't have enough food. That's basically it. I can't think of anything else. I just think that that's one of the things I wanted to bring up because so many say, no, no, give them natural, give them raw. You can't. If they drink that and they don't metabolize it and, they, and if they don't, you know, it doesn't work through their body, it will kill them. And periodically we'll see the hummingbird come through here that might have drank something and 
Some of them hang out and they look terrible, but in a couple days, they've probably worked it through their system. And then of course, some of them, I don't know. I've heard some people say they put grape juice and different things in there. Please don't, because here's the thing. It, you can't eat, here's, we have pyracantha bushes around the property here. That is actually pretty toxic to humans. And yet, the birds eat the berries. When I'm talking about the, the bush, I'm talking about the orange berries. The birds load themselves up and eat the berries. Their metabolism is used to eating that. Well, that's what the way the hummingbirds are. They are used to eating sucrose. They need that. That's the way, I mean, look how they have to fly. Look how much sugar they have to burn up. If we were running circles all day too, we probably would have a whole different metabolism too. Their metabolism demands sucrose, which comes out of the flowers. They also need protein, but they get that out of collecting insects around the yard. And if they can't find insects on their own, for some reason, they know that they can find spider webs and pull them out of there. So they get their protein that way. But as far as sucrose, with the way things are now, they can't get enough. And if they don't get enough, they'll perish. So if you can and you see them, go ahead and put a hummingbird feeder out. Believe you me, they'll appreciate it. And don't think they're eating this all day, they're not. They come here, they feed, and they leave for 10, 15 minutes a day. They'll go into the gardens. They could go miles away to other places that there, maybe there's more flowers that they like, and then they come back and feed, um, you know, to get their drink here. They do drink water, so you can put water out. I've seen them drink out of our fountains, but as far as this, they're coming here because they're hungry, and it's a hot day today. It's been 100 all week. Today we're supposed to be cooler, maybe 90, 95. And that's very important for them to keep hydrated and to keep the proper food in their body. I can't think of anything else. As far as nesting, they're gonna go back and start nesting pretty much early spring. They start here and I've had them, as you've seen, nest on my kitchen window. Yes, this is why I had to switch over to another kitchen window because she built a nest and wasn't letting anybody near it. So they'll start nesting here early in the year and then they can have anywhere from two to four nests. See, that's drinking out of a dot I made, see? What do they call that? Somebody told me they call it a ramekin. See what he's drinking out of? I painted the top with non-toxic paint, red, but the bottom I didn't. Nothing painted on the inside and put some sugar water in there. They love that. You can hang one or two of those around your yard with a piece of wire. It's a little tiny cup. I've got a video on that. And you can design all kinds of hummingbird feeders with the little ramekins. The little food containers, you get it with takeout. We don't go get takeout, but a lot of you probably do. And you can wash those up and you can use them. Just make a little hole on top. See, he loves that. He can sit on it. Is this cool? You think, does she deal with this every day of her life? I do. I do. And I've got to make sure every morning that they're all full. Um, as far as leaving hummingbird feeders in the sun when it's hot, they happen to like this. I've tried to move them in the shade and they demand having their feeders here. So what I'm doing is I'm changing it every 30 minutes or so. And I also freeze some hummingbird food and put it in ice cube trays and then crack the ice cube trays and put hummingbird ice cube, frozen hummingbird nectar into these feeders with food. And that keeps it cool, sometimes even up to an hour. So that's helped a lot. Uh, shade would be better, but they're so used to it here. I've got the other window. You probably can't see it. No, that one stays fairly shady. Let's see what else. Um, keeping the food out, I wouldn't keep it out if you've got it in your garden for more than, well, probably no more than three days. If it's in the sun, then you really should change it every day. If it's in this, if it's in direct sunlight and it's warm, then I would change it every day. As far as ants, just make yourself an ant moat. I've got videos on that. It's just a cup with a wire. It's very easy to make, or you can buy them on eBay. They're little ant moats. It fills with water, and the ants cannot cross, cross water. They don't swim. They will get across if it evaporates, but you, you can stop the ants. And bees, bees do start to collect more sugar at certain times of the year. They want to store for the winter. And so sometimes I even have to change some of my feeders to make sure it's got a really good bee guard on it. And then once the bees are done, you can put your old feeders back. So that, that's a way of getting rid of bees. You can get rid of bees and wasps. And pretty much at it, that's it. They're so easy to feed. They're so easy to help out and so enjoyable. Look, I'm talking to you on my cell phone. I'm using my cell phone. And how rude, I'm really not talking to you. I'm watching the hummingbirds. 
I love watching them. We have five species that hang out here. There should be six, but I haven't seen the six. I think I saw one the other day. Um, they, I, I don't want to say their name because I want to butcher their name. Calliope, Calliope. They have, their flights are longer than their tail. And that's a way to see them and they're tiny. And I did have a tiny one that was probably a female here. She was probably lost because they probably go somewhere else. And she was drinking the other day and her flight feathers were much longer than her tail when she was drinking and folded. So I think one of them did come through. I did not get a video of it. I've got a pie that's been hanging out. But we do have uh, five other species that do stay here. They ha they're here all year round. We've got the Annas all year. Don't you love that? Look at that. The easiest feeder to make and it costs a penny. We have not free. Look at that. Unless you make peanut butter cups and they love their peanut butter cups. Ice cream containers. They love feeding out of the ice cream containers. So that's it. So let's pick up my lights so you can see me. I didn't want to make this 20 minutes. I think I've really answered the question. Don't worry about the sugar. It's not causing them to become diabetics. They're not human. They're birds with the highest metabolism probably in the world. They need the sugar because of the way they have to move all day. This is detrimental to them. They need sucrose. And if they can find enough food, they can survive for seven, eight years. And that's a long time for such a tiny bird. That's really, really good. If they don't find enough food, uh, they won't live that long if they can't find enough food. I'm trying to help them out. And yes, I am probably creating more to survive by putting out food. So instead of having, let's say, eight babies and only three or four surviving, out of the eight babies that one little female is producing, maybe all eight are making it maybe seven are making it for the next year and they're going to go off and produce and as long as they have enough food they'll be fine and they may not all stay here they may take off and go somewhere else they'll split off and that's what's really really good um i am helping as far as their numbers now you've got to help me by putting out feeders and flowers around your garden too don't worry about the insects if you've got plants in your garden you're going to have insects and they'll feed on all kinds of little insects. Let's see, what else can we answer on this? Males. They never pair. They never pair. All they do is breed and that is it. And then the female does everything. And then the spring they breed multiple times because remember they're having multiple nests. They generally lay two eggs and if all goes well and they have enough food, They'll, they'll hatch both babies, they'll raise both babies, and a lot of times, like here, I had one female that was built a second nest while she was raising the first nest and had two nests going at the same time. So if they have enough food, then they will produce a lot of babies. And if there's a lot of food around, she'll take them around. She will take them to the feeders, and she will introduce them to feeders, and then she will take them around the yard and flowers so they learn quickly as what is the feeder and how to survive. Males, they're, like I said, they're, they're not going to do anything. They do not feed the babies. They do not incubate. They don't do anything but just breathe with the females, and that is it. Let's see, what other questions have I had? No brown sugar, no honey, no nothing, just white granulated sugar, and it doesn't matter which type. Then you say, well, how do you know if they're cane sugar, sugar cane? I should say, how do you know if it's cane sugar or beet sugar? If the package strictly says sugar on it, white granulated sugar or granulated sugar, then it's beet sugar. Generally, it's beet sugar. If it says cane sugar, then it's cane sugar. That's how you know. They don't tend to label beet sugar. They will not label beet sugar beet sugar. They just label it sugar. Cane sugar is generally labeled cane sugar. Let's see. What other things have you wanted to know? As far as feeders, glass or plastic, that's up to you. I use plastic. The glass are heavier. And I've heard too many stories from other people how they dropped it and they broke it. I prefer plastic. I wash them every time I bring them in and I change the feeder or I wash the feeder out because it's empty. I do wash it. I use a toothbrush. I use a paintbrush. I have designated tools that I use to wash my feeders and I do wash them. I use a um, soap bar, a bar of soap 
and I'll rub the brush on it and then I'll scrub inside and rinse it really well. Some people say, no, 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 don't use soap, use vinegar. You know what? You wash it the way you want. Wash it the way you would wash your child's cup if they handed it to you and they dropped it in the mud. You treat it the same way and you should be fine with that. Water, as far as water, I use tap water. I drink, I don't care for the tap water, but I drink it. Our tap water is fine, so you can use tap water. Keep in mind when you boil water, you get a lot of the pathogens out. So you can always boil the water and then let your tea kettle or your pot cool and then use that water too, but I use tap water. I boil the water, I mix the sugar up in, it's a quarter of a cup of sugar to one cup of water. I know you know how I'm gonna make it. Let's say I'm gonna use one cup or a container. I put the sugar in that I need. I add a little bit of boiling water, stir it up until the sugar becomes clear and then top it off with cold water and then I can put it out. Don't ever put hot food out. Let's see, what else is there? They mesmerize me. Mesmerizing just watching them. Look at them sit up there on that little pole I put there. Really, I think that's pretty much it. They're really easy to take care of. But I, you know, you use what, I like plastic, you use whatever. Uh, make sure that the slits are big enough for them. I've seen a couple feeders designed with the slits were too thin. And I had to take my soldering iron and make the holes a little bit bigger. They wouldn't use it, they didn't like it. The fancier the feeders, sometimes the less they'll feed from it. Keep that in mind. If it really is fancy, I've had people contact me, they won't use it. Well, if they don't know how to use it, then they're not going to use it. So really, the simplest feeders, these behind me, a lot of them are just from Walmart, and they're like $3, and they are really, really good. You can get them from the Dollar Tree and, and 99 cents or two in the spring, and then I make a little seat. I like all my feeders to have seats on them, see? They can sit, and that is important to me because, well, don't you want to sit and eat, or do you want to be standing up and running around while you're eating? Because basically, that's what they're doing. And even on the little ramekins, those little food containers, they can sit on the edge of that too. See how they want to sit? They like sitting. They don't have to sit, but I want them to sit, see? And sometimes that can make a difference on a feeder too. If you want them to hang around, then make sure your feeder's got a place where they can sit. And the most expensive doesn't mean better. The most important thing with feeders are look at them over. I've got a lot of videos on hummingbirds. You can go through all the hummingbird ones. Make sure your feeder comes completely apart, completely, so you can wash it. If you unscrew where you put in the nectar and you can't get into the bottom part of the feeder, Let's say it's a disaster waiting to happen because if you can't get inside there and scrub it with a toothbrush or a brush and really clean it out, and I don't mean just soaking it, then you're going to have fungus and bacteria and everything growing. These completely come apart. Again, would you feed your kid out of it? Look at it. And if you think, well, gee, I can't clean this and scrub this, and I don't know if my kid can drink out of that cup because it's sealed. Would you give your kid a sealed cup? So look at it that way. Treat them like you would your child. Hopefully. And um, I think then you'll understand it is it is simple. And I do like the one. See, I'm trying to see. I don't need that. Let me move the light. See, this whole thing comes apart. The whole thing comes apart and you can clean it. Even the peanut butter cup comes apart and you can just clean it out. And that's the most important thing. You want to be able to clean it. I'm trying to think of other things I get asked about all the time. I've made this way too long. This was supposed to be nothing with nothing. That's basically it. Find the place. And if you're not sure, you know, you do know you have hummingbirds, let's go back and check them out. All right. If you know you've got hummingbirds, try your, some feeders around different parts of the yard until they find the feeder. See what the lighting is? This is what I'm having problems. I'm trying to figure out lighting. This is just a vlog. How about a humming? I'll call this a hummingbird vlog. And that's pretty much all that I really need to say on them today. I think I've covered a whole lot more than I usually do. See, this is what I'm trying to, oh, now I'm totally dark, even with the light. Oh, my light's burning out. Let's see. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I'll have to figure this out. It's not a studio, it's my kitchen. Someday I'm gonna cook in this kitchen. But uh, no, I don't mean I cook every day. Every day. And just I'm trying to figure out how to 
do a balance where I can cook out and walk in the kitchen, maybe do some live feed. And you'll see me walk in, literally walk in my kitchen with some stuff from the yard thinking, what am I going to do with this today? Oh, I know what I'm going to do with it. First, I have to make sure the hummingbird feeders are full. Otherwise, they're too distracting. I'm moving the light around. Oh, well, I think I've answered. Oh, and we just burned out. I think I've answered all the questions that I generally get. And it's a lot of times it is the same question over and over. You hang different feeders up in different areas. You see what area they like the best and go from there. If you've got hummingbirds in your area, just lure them in. And once they come in and they have food all the time, and that's important. If I let these feeders run dry out here and they came here and there was no food, they may not come back. And the reason they wouldn't come back is if they found a neighbor not far from here putting food out, they'll stay where the food is. Because food is their number one important thing. Remember that. So you want to make sure once you start and you've got hummingbirds coming in, don't let the feeder run dry. And at that point, it's good to have multiple feeders out. Like I said, these things, I'm trying to point, you can't, you can't see. These feeders out here are like $3 at Walmart. You can't beat it. I actually get them with my groceries. And I just love them. You can get them all over eBay, Amazon, different places. Some of them have bigger holes in them, uh, which are fine. But they're plastic. They completely come apart. They're easy to clean and wash. And I don't know what else to say about them. So I think I've covered pretty much everything. You can make your own feeders. I know a lot of you don't have hummingbirds right now. But believe it or not, after the holidays, we're all going to start thinking about where they're going because it depends on the weather. You don't know when they're gonna start moving around. If they know that the spring is gonna be coming early, then you will have them early. I've had them nest in my window once, I think it was in January, because the weather was good. So that is the thing. They know the weather better than us. I believe animals do know the weather better than us. And plant some trees around, get some flowers around, and encourage them to come in, and then you should be able to have hummingbirds too. Again, keep in mind, years ago, I had one hummingbird. Now we have thousands. Be careful what you wish for. Actually, I happen to love it. And if I have to charge that food, that's what I do. No big deal. I have to make sure that's one thing. They get fed first and then we get, it's not we. It would be the order I feed, it would be the hummingbirds, the dogs. Well, dogs will always have. And then Gary and I. And if we had to, Gary and I could eat out of the garden. We have enough food that we could survive. So I love watching them feed out of ramekins. Look at that, that little food container. Isn't that cute? You can make those so easy and just put them around and they will find them. I love that. I'm not, what I'm doing is I'm, I've got my cell phone, so I'm watching my cell phone. I should be talking to you. All right, I'm going to go. Hope I've answered a lot of questions and they will be back, probably start venturing back in different areas in maybe March. After the holidays, get ready, start thinking about things, go to the nurseries, look at flowers, put some plants and flower pots, get yourself some feeders. In the meantime, I'll take care of them until they go back to you. With that, have a great day. And don't forget to eat with your girl. Bye-bye. See, I can't get the lighting on both sides. It's either them or me. You would rather see them. <laughs>